So welcome everybody joining us for our worship both here and at home. Um, those who would like to give, there's a plate at the back where you can use the QR codes on our posters here, or there's a link on our online to our online giving page on the service description of the services at home. Other notices to be aware of, we're going to be having our annual church meeting on the 11th of October after the morning service. And the other thing we agreed last week was that we're going to have a kind of autumn sale to use our backlog of books and things we'd already collected. And that's going to be on the 20th, 26th of September at 2 o'clock. We might do an earlier sitting as well to keep the sort of numbers not too high. But if anyone would like to volunteer to help with the sort of two or three stalls we are having, that would be lovely. So, so welcome, welcome to our worship and I hope you enjoy joining with us this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lord and also with you. So let us still our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship with, with God by saying the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through spirit. For the spirit searches everything. Therefore let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. So we, and so we pray, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> so let us say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We pray the collect for today, the 13th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself, Help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you through him who is lifted upon the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from Romans, chapter 13. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. 
the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, and the day is near. Let, let us then lay aside the works of darkness, and put on the armour of light. Let us live honourably as in the day, not in revelling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarrelling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If a member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At first reading, the, today's Gospel sounds more like a committee rule than the word of Jesus. In fact, Jesus himself couldn't have said it because the church didn't exist yet. Also, it suggests that, gen that tax collectors and Gentiles were outcasts, and we know that certainly Jesus did not look on them in that way. Furthermore, it suggests limits on forgiveness, and that too is not Jesus' way. It certainly seems as if something's been lost in the interpretation, in translation here. However, if we delve into this passage and unpack it a bit, the simplest way of putting over its meaning is that it's about the breakdown of relationships and their rebuilding. It's about forgiveness. It's about love. These verses have been called the rule of Christ because they redefine the goals of the confrontation or intervention in seeking to rescue and forgive, to offer care in a spirit of humility. We hear that in Romans, how Christians should be. Probably all of us here have experienced times when relationships between ourselves and others have been strained or broken down completely. And if you're anything like me, when that happens, you feel deeply upset and hurt. You also feel guilty, because as a Christian, 
You try to live up to Jesus' instruction, love one another as I have loved you. As we said before, that's not always easy. It's even harder when you do have a fallout with someone, or when you discover someone has done something wrong to walk towards you, either by something they've said or something they've done. And it's tempting, when we have been hurt in this way, to say nothing, to let the hurt or grievance fester. But that just makes us more and more angry and resentful. It creates a barrier between ourselves and God in a way. And then, and then we eventually we possibly boil over and say or do something that we regret. And then the relationship is more often than not irretrievable. Rather than do that, this gospel passage suggests that we try and retrieve things before it's too late. We, we should try and meet up with that person and talk about it and see if we can arrive at a solution or a compromise. Again, a very difficult thing to do. Very difficult indeed. But it, it, it can take a lot of courage, but it's worth it. If that doesn't work, see if you can involve others in helping to resolve the situation. Often mediators can look at both sides impartially and put a more forward and more objective view on the problem. If that fails, it may be necessary to take it further. Although forms of litigation and legal proceedings often spell trouble, and it may be that you don't want to go that far. The, under, but the important thing, the underlying thrust of all of this, is that we, as Christians, are commanded to seek love and forgive. Just as forgive as God forgives us. If we, as Christians, can't forgive, what hope is there for others? It's part of being God's earthly kingdom. We can pray to God to intercede and to help us, but we can't ask him to heal broken relationships if we haven't actively made an effort on our own behalf. This is true of every prayer. God works with us, not, but not instead of us. We might often tend towards thinking, well, I'm hurt and annoyed at the moment, but I'll get over it. I'll learn to live with it. But that's not what Jesus is teaching us. Jesus is telling us that conflict isn't to be ignored. Rather, we are obligated to go and confront the person we believe has behaved badly towards us. Bring the matter into the open. Try and sort it out. If the alleged wrongdoer refuses to comply, the implication is that he or she is in effect acting in a non-Christian way. Shouldn't really be part of the Christian community. But that's not, where, that's not what we're about. By making an attempt at reconciliation, the aggrieved person is helping the wrongdoer to make amends trying to keep them in the fold, so to speak, and that's what we should do. Trying the, the kind of community that Jesus has called into existence is the people who love one another so much that they refuse to risk the loss of a member of their community or of themselves by harboring resentments. Remember, the dynamic of church life has to be a continual recourse to forgiveness because we know ourselves as a forgiven community. Our Lord said on the cross, forgive them for they know not what they do. That is part of our ethos. It's part of our faith, part of what we are. So, Let's think about whether perhaps there's someone who's hurt us in some way whom we ought to be getting in touch with in, in, in an attempt to be 
become reconciled. Pray about it. Pray for the strength to do something about it. To do as Jesus tells us. Give them a chance to think to make things right again. As a church, let's think about what we can learn from Matthew and from each other's pr practice about being a healthy church, a forgiving church, for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us reaffirm our faith by saying together the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So we sit to pray to the of intercessions by hell. <coughs> Let us pray for the church and for the world, and thank God for his unfailing goodness. Gracious God, as September begins to strip back its autumn foliage in the final burst of fruitfulness, we know our faith too has to move on. Make us ready for the journey wherever you may take us, without doubting your loving presence. Keep us from a stagnant faith that never changes, and grows, and open us to new things this autumn. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious God, we pray for your church throughout the world, especially in places where it is hard to be a Christian. Thank you for all those who spend their lives helping others to find you. At a time when many are questioning the relevance of the church, help us to be witnesses in the world strengthening the presence of Christ in our communities. Help us to answer those questions of relevance by what we do and what we are known for. Make us a welcoming body of Christ here in this church, and bless and guide Lisa and Ruth as they minister to us in these challenging times. We pray for God as he begins his training for ministry, for him and his family, as he faces new challenges with the confidence of knowing you've guided him through the years to this point in his life and will continue to walk with him. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious God, we lift up to you our world, giving thanks for its beauty and majesty, 
for its many creatures and peoples, for its bounty and flourishing. In our thanksgiving, we also remember those who struggle day in and day out simply to survive, those caught in the midst of conflict and war, those affected by natural disaster, those who are displaced, those desperate for a new start, free from fear and war, as they seek refuge in this country by taking dangerous journeys. <coughs> Watch over them all, Lord, and grant them deliverance from adversity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious God, at a time when there is increasing unrest and growing fear of what is coming on the earth, we bring before you the leaders of the various nations of the world, praying that they will hear the cries of those who are suffering under their leadership. Lord, we pray that world leaders will seek after wisdom and justice, mercy and truth for their citizens, and not personal status. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious God, we pray for our country, for our Prime Minister and Government and their advisors. Grant them wisdom as they bear the heavy burden of leadership, so that they may carry out their many duties in the best interests of all people. And we pray for our town, for our Member of Parliament, Peter Gibson, and our town councillors, for our shops and businesses, and key workers. We pray for our children and young people and their teachers as they return to schools and colleges and prepare for university. Lord, watch over our children and keep them safe in these difficult times that challenge us all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Dear Lord, you knew what it is to suffer. You also have the power to heal. So we place into your gentle hands those who suffer illness and pain, whether physical or emotional. And we pray especially this morning for baby Joseph and his family. We lift you Bill Moss and Christine as she supports him. And Gillian Lunn as she endures intensive treatment, praying that it will be effective. And in a moment of quiet, anyone known to us personally in need of your healing power in their lives. Lord, for those for whom we have prayed, ease their pain and heal the damage done to them in body, mind or spirit. Be present to them through the support of friends and in the care of doctors and nurses, and fill them with the warmth of your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious God, your Son said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Grant your comfort now, we pray, to those whose hearts are saddened because they have lost a loved one, whether recent or some time ago. In dark moments, Lord, when they reach out to hold your hand and feel the warmth of the one who has already passed from death to life to welcome others into God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And gracious God, we offer ourselves again to you, not as perfect Christians, but open to your encouragement and grace. Live in us, work in us, love through us as we stumble hopefully through the week, seeking to follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, 
Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. So do you please turn around and share the peace with one another. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. With our Eucharistic prayer this morning, we're using Eucharistic prayer E on page 30. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and loved your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising has set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly pray, the saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread and wine out of court, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed to you and for men for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and path of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms, and bring us to St. Matthew, St. Luke, St. Michael, and all the saints, to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O 
a loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. The Saviour has taught us, let us pray with confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Here we pray. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave to you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And he loved in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
God our Creator, you feed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us to our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst no more. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit likes give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and our whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In you and all those whom you love, now and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>